Colonel uh, Waldron, did you, um, did you have the opportunity to examine uh, any of the Dominion machines that were used in this election? Uh, yes, sir. Our team uh, looked at some uh, machines and software up in Michigan. So you know that Dominion machines were used in Maricopa County to count the vote? Correct. And they were also used in Michigan? Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania. And the machines, that, the machines that you observed, took a look at, were able to examine, were used in the Michigan vote? Correct. Now tell us a little about Dominion. Dominion is a, is a company that makes uh, voting machines and voting calculation machines? That's correct. They've got uh, full end-to-end -end, uh, election, you know, equipment and software. And uh, the actual software in the Dominion machine, is that Dominion software or is it someone else's? Uh, Dominion is, is more of a hybrid. Uh, they, over the years, they've acquired uh, other voting companies, um, Sequoia and Premier. Uh, Sequoia was spun off of uh, SGO, and uh, Premier was spun off of uh, Diebold as a result of the uh, antitrust lawsuit. Sequoia is the company that was uh, involved in the very serious um, uh, miscalculation of the Chicago vote in 2007, wasn't it? I believe that's correct, yes, sir. And they were using Smartmatic uh, software, right? Correct. And they're, the software, the, the, the licensing agreements are uh, pretty well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good spider chart for all of these companies. They all share a common DNA in the, the software code. And that company, Smartmatic, their, their roots are in Venezuela, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Uh, Hugo Chavez was one of the one of the founders, and uh, invested I think 28 percent ownership in the the initial setup of uh, of the uh, the SGO election systems. And they have been involved in several South American elections that were fixed, altered. Argentina, Bolivia, Singapore, Venezuela, Italy. Several. And just, just to simplify things, and we can make this available to you, and, uh, we've, we have several witnesses that go back to that period of time who were involved in the vote fixing, who have looked at the vote pattern in Arizona and elsewhere, and said that the pattern matches the way in which Domin Dominion and Smartmatic, companies like that, fix votes. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And uh, what did you, uh, what, what did you, well, let me ask you this other question. Uh, one of the former officials of the United States government, a gentleman named Chris Krebs, the former DHS official, uh, shortly after the election, he made an announcement that many of these people refusing to take a look at any evidence are relying on. Well, what did he say? Um, Mr. Krebs uh, was the director of uh, CISA D at DHS, and uh, he basically said that this election was the most secure in history. The most what? Most secure. In the history. most secure in history. And partially that was because the states uh, do a, uh, an excellent job of validating voter rolls and that this equipment is not connected to the Internet. That was in his... Uh, this, he said this, uh, uh, this is not this equipment which was largely Dominion and several others, is not connected to the Internet. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, is Dominion on his council? Uh, Dominion is, uh, was on uh, Mr. Krebs' election security advisory council. And, and is there, and we'll get to it with the witnesses, is there substantial evidence, not only here in Arizona, but in other, other states like what we presented in Pennsylvania, that Dominion was, in fact, connected to the Internet. Uh, are, you, are you referring to information other than the user's manual? <laughs> well, let's go back to the user's manual. Tell them about the user's manual. Uh, the the uh, Dominion Suite user's manual is, is about an inch and a half thick. Um, and uh, my, my team went back to the user's manual and looked at uh, all the instances where, uh, in the user's manual, uh, it tells operators to 
connect the Ethernet cords to the router, uh, and, and it is, uh, the systems are connected to the Internet. And then uh, what evidence do you have that there actually was connection to the Internet? Uh, our teams looked at uh, spider graphs of the Dominion network uh, on Election Day and showed the, the increased uh, web traffic, Internet traffic, on Election Day for Dominion servers. So on, on Election Day, Dominion was communicating by Internet? Correct. Contrary to what Mr. Krebs said or thought? <coughs> that, that is correct. And tell us now, what, um, what's the, what, how, how, how do they take us through how the vote can be modified, and then take us through <coughs> what you saw in the machine in uh, Michigan where they did actually modify the vote? So uh, um, my background uh, in the military, I uh, started off my career as an air cavalry officer, um, flying helicopters, counter reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Um, I moved uh, later into information warfare as an as a information operations officer, uh, running uh, uh, psychological operations, computer network operations, um, deception, operation security and electronic warfare, special electronic warfare. And um, our team has been researching this specific issue since August of this year. Um, we are working with another team that's been uh, intently working on this voting machine manipulation for about two years uh, when it became apparent in the uh, Ted Cruz and Beto race in 2018, as well as the, uh, the Kentucky governor's race with, with Matt Bevins. Um, we saw significant anomalies in those races, and that's kind of the experience or our, our background working with this system. And I, I would tell you as, a, uh, as an unconventional warfare uh, information operations, information warfare specialist, uh, the American populace is facing uh, an unconventional uh, warfare scenario, and this, this, is, this is information warfare. Um, the voting systems in the U.S. and uh, Arizona, Dominion, and several of the other machines were built to be manipulated. Uh, and, it, and as the mayor said, they've been used in elections uh, around the world with uh, questionable results. And uh, we believe that uh, these, these same questionable results are present in, in this election. Um, again, my, my background as um, an information warfare officer is how to get in and corrupt these machines to conduct strategic influence operations. How do I, how do I get, get the enemy or, or a targeted population in a foreign country to um, think and act a certain way? Um, these machines have multiple uh, points of injection that are um, vulnerable, everywhere from the server level where um, passwords, accesses are posted for the dark web for any hacker to, to get in and access them. And what they can do at the far, far right limit is download CSV files or like an Excel spreadsheet, change the columns, and re-upload them. And uh, that, that can be done at the server level. At the operator level, if there's software, it can be corrupted. It can be manipulated with a device that is as small and as simple as a USB device, which these machines are, are booted up and run off of. So. Um, the, the, the little bit of history, and I can show you some uh, some charts on on the DNA of these machines. But the common uh, the common software goes back to SGO SGO Smartmatic. Um, as Mayor mentioned, uh, they sold uh, Sequoia voting systems to Dominion in 2010, and then Diebold spun off the Premier Election System to Dominion as a result of the antitrust concerns. I believe that was also in 2010. So the bottom line is that these systems all have similar code and similar functions, and it's displayed in their operator's manual. So, um, it, you know, I know it's kind of been, uh, you know, in the, in the press, it's kind of been poo-pooed that, uh, yeah, this doesn't go back to Hugo Chavez. Um, but I, I personally debriefed the son of a Cuban intelligence officer uh, who had firsthand knowledge speaking with um, two of Hugo Chavez's uh, family members that, um, in the Maduro election, when the populist uprising threatened uh, Venezuela's uh, totalitarian leadership, 
uh, that uh, Hugo's, uh, Hugo Chavez's family members said that don't worry, that it's guaranteed that their father invested the money to build the SGO uh, voting machine system. So in a nutshell, these systems are not what you've been told, if you've been told anything. They are connected to the Internet. There is no transparency of how the voter information is processed, <coughs> moved, and stored. And as a matter of fact, these companies have refused to, to allow any type of inspection uh, into their code, and they, they always decry, uh, you know, it's, it's our IP. It's IP protection. Um, but with um, the declaration, I believe, with uh, Jay Johnson, who was uh, our Secretary of Homeland uh, Security, uh, he declared that uh, the national um, election system was national critical infrastructure. So there is, you know, uh, I think, reason to for uh, you know for us to understand the code and how these machines function and how they use our uh, our votes and process votes. The um, the voting record is able to be modified, deleted, adjusted by administrators or outside threats, and those are, those are also explained in the, in the user's manual. Operators can assign votes for write-in votes, blank or error ballots in large numbers. So all of these votes, they could get put into a batch file, and then the administrator of that voting or tabulation system can say, okay, there's, there's 8,000 votes in this batch file, or there's 5,000 votes in this batch file, and they can say, well, I think, you know, this batch will just make this go to this candidate. And, and they, they, have that in, in, they have that authority in the user's manual to do that. Um, our team is not the only team that's working on this. There are literally hundreds of other small cyber teams that uh, have weighed in on this. Uh, there are tons of statisticians. Some of you'll hear from your, some of your, uh, your Arizona citizens today. Uh, but we've been working in several states looking at, at these anomalies. Um, but it's, it's not a secret. Uh, I mean, DEF CON last year, I think the hacking teams broke in and manipulated these machines in under two minutes. So it can be done, it's easy, and, and there are very little security. So uh, they can be hacked to manipulate votes. Um, one of our white hat hackers uh, discovered a malware on the server. Uh, it's called the QSnatch that basically records um, login credentials and passwords. So if someone in, uh, in Philadelphia or someone in Maricopa County or someone in, in uh, Antrim, Michigan logged in, that malware will grab their username and password. And so you can log in. If you got access to the, the, the backside of that malware, you can log in wherever you are in the world to Maricopa County to manipulate. Um, so Colonel, there, there's multiple Colonel, ways. Uh, just interrupt you for a second. Yes, so, sir. So we get the uh, point of this clear. You actually examined one of the machines, and you were actually able to see very, very uh, clear changes in vote in the machine, correct? Correct, in uh, Michigan. How, and it was down ballot changes. How, how many? Correct. Um, so the, the down ballot um, looks, it was for, there were, there were changes in the election day vote on 11-3 on to the recount vote on 11-6. Uh, say, for example, uh, the school board, one lady on the election day received 519 votes, and this was a very small uh, precinct. Uh, and the, the post recount, uh, they went from 592 to 852. The total votes went from 1068 to 1810, and the write-in vote jumped uh, from 24 to, to 112. There was another um, proposition on a state proposal that um, jumped significantly from, from 700 votes on Election Day up to 1083 uh, on, on the recount. So there, there are a lot of variabilities, and what we believe this is due to is the, the USB drive that was used in the election day versus the post-election uh, post recount.